Welcome, everybody, to the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum's webinar, an update on the Canada Apprentice Loan. My name is Racine DeBartolo, and I will be your host today. If you have any thoughts during today's webinar, uh, please do feel free to reach out to us on social media. You can mention us on Facebook at CAF Apprenticeship or tweet to us at CAF underscore FCA. So we're very pleased to welcome our presenter today who will walk us through today's topic. Sarah West Reinard is the Executive Director of the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum. She oversees a team working to develop and deliver initiatives in support of Canada's apprenticeship community. This work includes promoting skilled trades careers, undertaking research to inform apprenticeship policy and practice, and connecting stakeholders through events designed to share best practices. So welcome, Sarah. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Racine, and uh, welcome, everybody. I'm glad that you're able to uh, join us today. I'm happy to be able to provide some information about the Canada Apprentice Loan, including um, some background information and uh, take up. Uh, CAF has been involved with the Canada Student Loan Program since this initiative was uh, first announced. And, uh, and our role, um, like that of stakeholders in apprenticeship from across the country, has really been um, to ensure that the Canada Apprentice Loan was uh, structured to meet the unique needs of apprentice learners. Um, the Canada Student Loan Program has been providing us with uh, some background on, on the take up of the program, um, specifically around the first full fiscal year of the program, which was uh, um, between April 2016 and uh, March 2017. Um, so I'll address some of that, uh, some of that today. Um, we're now nearing the end of the second year of the program. And we're still really hearing from apprentices and, and many employers that they don't really know very much about, uh, about the Canada Apprentice Loan. So, it's, so that is uh, really the reason for, um, for this webinar. And we've, we organized the webinar in uh, concert with loan administrators. Um, and I think that they are really interested from a government perspective in seeing greater awareness of the Canada Apprentice Loan among apprentices and among the apprenticeship community in general. So this is an opportunity um, to learn a little bit about uh, the program, but also to get some of your feedback. Um, we're interested in tracking uh, stakeholder awareness of the loan and try and uh, collect your thoughts about whether it's achieving its uh, intended purpose, which is to really overcome barriers uh, to apprentices returning to school for subsequent periods of uh, technical training. So I'm going to get started with the barriers to apprenticeship. And uh, CAF's research has identified a number of uh, barriers that apprentices face on their path to certification. So just to quickly go uh, through some of these, the lack of awareness about apprenticeship as a post-secondary option, something we hear about um, all the time. And even though the efforts are underway in every part of Canada to raise awareness among students about opportunities in the skilled trades um, from groups like Skills Canada and the jurisdictional apprenticeship authorities, school boards, unions, nonprofit groups, all doing fantastic work uh, to raise awareness. Um, but there's still this lack of awareness is something that we're still hearing about. Now, throughout 2017, um, CAF held a number of workshops with youth across the country. And as I said, despite all the good work underway, uh, many of the students that attended those events, uh, particularly those from underrepresented groups, said that they had had little exposure to opportunities in the skilled trades. Uh, another difficulty we hear about is uh, finding an employer sponsor and maintaining consistent uh, employment in a way that allows apprentices to uh, work the necessary hours in their trade. Uh, one of the major challenges expressed by pre-apprenticeship students and youth apprentices is making that first connection with an employer sponsor and somebody who's not only interested in employing them, but interested in registering them as an apprentice. Once someone becomes registered, they continue to face challenges when it comes to consistent work, especially um, when we know that apprentices are among the first to be laid off at the end of a contract. 
we hear about uh, employer barriers. Um, prospective apprentices may have difficulty convincing their employers to register them um, because uh, the value proposition of uh, apprenticeship training is isn't always clear, or the company culture just simply isn't focused on um, training and uh, development. Another one of the barriers we hear about is uh, unwelcoming workplaces. Uh, particularly, this seems to be an issue for underrepresented groups where women and other minority groups don't receive the quality of training or the support that they need to uh, progress. Mobility has been identified as a challenge for apprentices. Uh, until recently, it was difficult for apprentices to move between provinces to find work. And when one area of the country is experiencing low demand, we know that apprentices need to really have the capacity to move where the work is and to have their workplace hours and their technical training levels recognized. Now, apprenticeship harmonization um, across the country and the apprentice mobility protocol really start to go a long way to addressing this concern as long as apprentices are aware um, of opportunities in other parts of the country and employers are confident that they're hiring someone who has um, the required skills. So mobility has been, I think, a much bigger challenge in the past. Um, it does continue to be a challenge, but I think largely now it's an awareness um, challenge. And completion, something we hear about all the time. Um, and though completion rates vary by trade and by region, um, studies have shown that roughly half of apprentices will achieve certification, uh, means that the other half don't for some reason. And I think while there are many reasons why apprentices may not complete their training, a number of the barriers noted here are reasons why they're not doing that, why they come up again and again in studies that these are the reasons that people aren't completing. You know, in a recent survey among CAF's Apprentices in Canada ePanel, um, we heard from uh, apprentices that 95% of them intend to complete. So it's uh, completion um, challenges I don't think are a problem uh, with motivation. And something we regularly hear about is that apprentices face financial obstacles to returning to school, and this is obviously the barrier that the Canadian uh, Apprentice Loan was designed to address. I mentioned a recent survey of apprentices in our Apprentices in Canada ePanel. This is another recent report on the perceived costs and benefits benefits of block release technical training and I think what it does is it really lays out uh, the reason why the Canada Apprentice Loan is, uh, is required. So 548 apprentices responded to this survey. On average they indicated that they forego about $8,000 in wages and overtime pay uh, when they attend technical training. And for rural, northern, and indigenous apprentices, they speak to even a, a higher cost um, based on their need um, to relocate to an urban area to attend training in addition to, the, uh, in addition to the wages and the overtime that they forgo. So that's the opportunity cost uh, related to technical training. If the costs prevent an apprentice from returning to technical training and progressing toward uh, certification, it, uh, it obviously speaks to um, delaying their return to school or deciding that the drawbacks to returning to school outweigh the benefits. So 72% of those surveyed um, said that they received uh, employment insurance benefits while they were at technical training and that resulted in an average um, income of about uh, $3,600. We often hear the EI payments are delayed, so this uh, can represent another concern for apprentices if they don't have money set aside for going to school, but you can really clearly see the gap here. Uh, if there's $3,600 in EI um, benefits and it's, it's costing uh, $8,000 to, to give up that, those wages to attend, then you can really see that there is a financial gap that apprentices um, are dealing with when they return to technical training. This is where we want to get in a little bit into some background about uh, about the Canada Apprentice Loan. Um, as I said, it was designed to address the financial barriers to returning to um, school. Um, if we look at the history of the program a little bit, you will see that, uh, that it specifies a block release training. Um, 
And this, there's some concern, I think, among some of the educational institutions that are offering alternative um, technical training arrangements like reduced time in school, online or blended learning options, um, that students are being rejected for the loan when they put in an application. And that is really because this requirement around the um, around block release training is written into the Canada Apprentice Loan. So just a little bit of history. Um, the, the Canada Apprentice Loan was announced as a federal budget measure in 2014. Um, they originally um, uh, estimated that the annual disbursements would be a hundred million dollars and at the time CAF was really assured that this was only an estimate so if demand um, was higher then those disbursements would be increased to accommodate um, the requests of eligible apprentices so just to give you sort of a sense of what um, the government expected um, and then we'll get into a little bit in terms of take up because I think that based on the amount of, um, based on the, the lack of knowledge still within the apprenticeship community, I think there's space for um, considerably uh, more uh, take up. So officials at the Canada Student Loan Program understood from the beginning that apprentices are unique as uh, students. Uh, they do tend to be older than other post-secondary students and uh, they have uh, mortgages and vehicles and family obligations. Uh, and so there was a consultation with apprenticeship stakeholders in the community to determine really how to frame that new program and understanding that the program had to be more flexible than um, than standard Canada student loans. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of history on the loan itself. Apprentices can apply for up to $4,000 per period of technical training in a red seal trade. It also means that apprentices can ask for less if they don't feel that they need the whole amount. Uh, there is a limit of five periods of technical training per person and this is the case even if the apprentice changes trades or takes a second trade. Um, so it's a, that five periods is per, um, per applicant. Much like other Canada student loans, the loan is interest free for six years so long as the apprentice remains uh, registered. And if they drop out of their program, the loan is put into repayment status. So that's very similar to um, other Canada student loans that are available to uh, college and university students. For this reason, uh, there is some effort made to ensure that an apprentice is still registered and that is uh, that can be uh, much more difficult um, for apprentices than it is for um, other types of students, but the program is tracking returns to subsequent periods of training. They're communicating with loan recipients if they don't apply for subsequent um, financial assistance. So there is um, there, there is some back and forth communication that's happening. And then like regular student loans, the apprentice has six months after um, their graduation before, um, before payments are required. So moving to eligibility requirements, as I said, apprentices registered in a red seal trade, um, so long as it's designated in their province or territory, attending block release technical training can apply for the loan. There is no expectation around what the loan will be spent on. So uh, this is really at the discretion of the apprentices, the apprentice who, who gets the loan. So it could be used to offset living expenses, uh, relocation for technical training, tuition, tools, but it could equally be spent on daycare arrangements and food and transportation. So there's really up to, uh, up to the loan recipient how it is spent and it's not something that's, uh, that, that's being tracked. When, you, when uh, apprentices first apply, um, they do need to pass a, a credit check um, for their first time. The training must be occurring at a training provider that's approved by the Jurisdictional Apprenticeship Authority. So for example, in Ontario, those would be TDAs or training delivery agents, uh, but somebody who has uh, institution or, or a, a union training center um, that has been approved by the, uh, by the Jurisdictional Apprenticeship Authority. And when we look at how apprentices uh, apply for the loan, the application process is entirely online. 
Um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of timing when it comes to uh, applying. Uh, apprentices can apply up to three months before their training, um, which is great for people who are maybe worried about uh, the financial obligations of, uh, of technical training and really want to be sure that, uh, that they have been approved and right up until the last day of technical training. So what we're actually hearing is that, uh, that apprentices can apply any time in that time period and they are uh, applying in that time period. Apprentices don't receive the money until they're attending school and for the most part the feedback that I've been hearing is that funds are transferred very quickly, um, generally within a week, and that the whole process is uh, really efficient. So people aren't having a problem with the online application process. They say it's straightforward, it's e easy to complete, and um, and it's uh, and the money comes quickly. So that's uh, that's great. Now, one of the unique features of the apprentice loan is that it doesn't affect eligibility for employment insurance. Um, so, in fact, there there are no financial needs assessment done on uh, on the apprentice. So while they do get the credit check, um, nobody's looking into family income, home ownership, auto ownership. And one of the things that we're hearing um, from the loan program is that as a result, perhaps, apprentices tend to start repayment as soon as they're back at work. Now that could reflect uh, when EI payments start to come in. Um, or it could just reflect I'm back at work and I'm making money, so I don't want to I don't want to owe money, and they have gone into uh, repayment early, so it's not required. It's possible to only start paying back um, the loan after the six months uh, pro after finishing um, after finishing the apprenticeship, uh, but it is also possible to pay back the loan while it's still in interest-free uh, status, and uh, the program is seeing that occur. I, I mentioned that the first full fiscal year um, that the loan was offered was 2016-2017. Uh, um, so that uh, fiscal year is uh, April to March. And uh, as you can see here, uh, more than 15,000 apprentices accessed the loan. Um, total disbursements were approaching um, 68 million. Um, this, the reason I, I really wanted to point this out was I mentioned that the that the government had indicated in the in the federal budget that disbursements of a hundred million would be available, and this is the first full year of operation, six, uh, almost 68 million dispersed, and with really still a lot of uh, uncertainty about the about the loan program, a, lot, a lack of knowledge about the program still uh, out there. So in fact, what happens, so that while there are 15,573 apprentices that accessed uh, Canada Apprentice Loan, there were actually 17,522 total loans approved. And so that reflects almost 2,000 apprentices who accessed more than one loan in the period. Uh, and so that's something to uh, keep in mind. And that puts the average loan at about $3,800 per person, um, telling us that the majority of recipients are choosing to take the full $4,000. Now that might be an indication that if the money is available, apprentices think, well, then we should take as much as uh, the government's willing to, uh, to loan to us. It could also be a reflection of the fact that apprentices feel as though they need more and so they're, you know, they're taking the, uh, the maximum. So this is really interesting when you start to look at take-up patterns across the country. And for the purposes of comparison, we looked at the percentage of the apprentice population in each region of the country compared to the regional take-up of, uh, of the loan program. So you can see the take-up has been particularly high in Alberta and somewhat lower than we might anticipate in Ontario. So in all regions other than Ontario, the loan uh, program take-up is stronger by percentage than the proportion of apprentices that are registered in that uh, region. And I will point out that the percentages of apprentices do not um, add up to 100%, and that is because Quebec is missing in, uh, in these numbers. So the uh, Quebec has 24.7% of all uh, Canadian apprentices, um, but the loan program is administered uh, differently in, uh, in Quebec. So that said, um, this chart 
and uh, and the next one I think give you a sense of uh, comparison and we could speculate I think on the reasons for provincial discrepancies particularly I think in Ontario and Alberta these are illustrated uh, to a, a higher degree but it's perhaps too early to really say why some regions are using the loan more than others because it's so early in the program so I'd be interested in getting some of your thoughts and your feedback on that I know that the the same could be said of the uh, loan administrators I think that they have some curiosity about um, why take-up numbers are um, low in Ontario and, and high in Alberta as I said we can uh, we could do a little bit of um, guesswork about that but I think that uh, it's probably best to sort of see where we go from here and, and not speculate uh, too much that said I'm interested in your feedback so looking at some of the the, um, the challenges and opportunities. I think that while a bit of background about the loan gives you a bit of a sense about what it's all about, um, the next part of this session I think we really wanted to focus on some of the challenges and uh, some of the opportunities. You know, how do we reach out to apprentices to ensure they know about not only the Canada Apprentice Loan but other supports that are available to them in a way that helps them progress through their apprenticeship and overcome the barriers, not just the financial barriers but some of the other barriers that I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, in my mind, um, one of the major challenges associated with the apprentice loan is that apprentices largely find out about it when they attend school. So that means they've already made a decision to step away from the workplace. Um, they arrive at school, maybe they're worried about money and maybe not. Uh, they learn about the loan while they're in school and then they apply for and receive the loan. It could be in the first week of their training and that's helpful, but what it actually does is it, it makes the problem of lack of awareness uh, an even bigger problem. So my concern is the apprentice who delays returning to school for financial reasons and as a result has no knowledge of the loan. And that really this, I uh, think, suggests the need for much greater awareness, um, an awareness campaign perhaps, because if an apprentice has decided not to return to school because of money and never finds out about the loan, that the loan is not doing its job, which is to, uh, to actually uh, support the very people who are having those, uh, those financial barriers. So we often tell prospective apprentices that one of the best advantages of uh, an apprenticeship is the ability to earn while you learn and finish training without student debt. That loan program turns that on its head a little bit. It, it uh, gets away from that so it now that is um, we're, we're attracting apprentices who are uncomfortable borrowing money. They may have a bad credit rating but the reality of employment gaps means that uh, perhaps those apprentices aren't even sure that they're going to be able to finish their apprenticeship, let alone repay a loan. So that becomes, you know, another challenge to be overcome, not just awareness, but that, that discomfort borrowing money and recognizing that apprenticeship has been promoted um, as, a, as a way of getting a, a certification uh, without student loans. Now there's there's some opportunities here I think to discuss money with apprentices in in a different way. So stakeholders often talk about the need to provide financial literacy training to apprentices and tradespeople so that they can really weather those gaps in employment. And when apprenticeship authorities and educators, employers and mentors talk to apprentices about returning to school, there's perhaps an opportunity not only to talk about the, the loan, but also discuss um, budgeting for technical training um, overall. And this might include a conversation about scaling the loan to somebody's need. So while somebody can take $4,000, they don't have to. And it's possible that in level one, the need might be greater um, because the apprentice isn't, to, isn't making as much, uh, whereas later stage apprentices who are making more money at work uh, could potentially scale back on the loan they take, making that repayment less, uh, less intimidating. So I think it opens up an opportunity to really talk about money right from the beginning of an apprenticeship. So I do think there's a huge opportunity around promotion. The Canada Student Loan Program doesn't have a budget for uh, promotion of, uh, of the Canada Apprentice Loan. Um, students in need 
um, generally already uh, know about student loans from a variety of other sources. So the fact that the apprentice loan is so new um, really does uh, leave us with a bit of a promotion gap and it really means that we're going to have to find ways of, uh, of ensuring that apprentices are uh, hearing about it, not only when they are arrive at school but beforehand and it means that we're relying on word of mouth and uh, awareness among apprentice mentors and support systems uh, and so we've really got to be uh, we've we've got to be willing to uh, to step up into that uh, so thanks again Sarah we really appreciate you uh, being here and sharing all this information great thank you so just before we go, everybody, I just wanted to uh, share some uh, resources and reports that we have available in case you're interested in getting more information. CAP has lots of uh, member reports available on our website. So the first one I wanted to speak about uh, was costs and benefits of block release technical training. Uh, and this is one of the reports that Sarah's referred to a few times during her presentation, uh, where we surveyed 548 apprentices in block release technical training. And this report is sharing insights about uh, their block release learning environment and the cost that they incur to attend training. Also, uh, we suggest that you check out tax credits and grants for employers, apprentices, journey persons, and trade qualifiers in Canada. Uh, and this is really a comprehensive resource that outlines tax credits, grants, and other financial support available nationally in each province and territory. Uh, so these are both available to CAF members by visiting the report section of our website. The Canadian Apprenticeship Forum, uh, we created the Skilled Trades Network as a national hub for employers and apprentices in the skilled trades. You can access information about training programs and financial support. Uh, employers will find practical tips and strategies on recruitment and mentorship. And apprentices can network. Uh, you can see tips on finding an employer sponsor, networking, or financial support. Uh, this is, again, available on the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum website. So just before we go, I just wanted to uh, share some of our current initiatives and projects CAF is working on. CAP has launched an online panel uh, to capture experiences of apprentices and newly certified journey persons. Participants will share their views by completing a few surveys each year that focus on topics related to building a career in the skilled trade. This is a national initiative to explore issues and gather timely insights about apprenticeship from the inside. Members will receive regular reports on topics like finding an employer sponsor and technical training. We've already released two reports based on these findings of the ePanel, which members can download on the report section of our website. So we'd love to get some uh, more help to recruit apprentices. Uh, so please do, uh, if you have any apprentices and you'd like to help us promote the ePanel, please contact us to partner and increase participation. So we do have another upcoming webinar. So we referred to, again, the cost and benefits of block release technical training on an ePanel report a couple of times. Uh, so if you're interested in getting a more in-depth view, we'll be sharing the key findings uh, at the March webinar about the learning environment uh, and the cost apprentices occur to attend training. Uh, so more information and registration details can be found on the event section of our website. Registration is now open for our biennial national conference on June 10th to 12th, when we'll be headed to Montreal. Uh, early bird registration is available until Ju February 28th, uh, so you have next week to save $100. Uh, and we also have some sponsorship and exhibitor opportunities available. Uh, you can visit our website or by contacting us directly following the webinar. The Canadian Apprenticeship Forum is a nonprofit organization that connects Canada's apprenticeship community. As a national voice for the apprenticeship community, we influence pan-Canadian apprenticeship strategies through research, discussion, and collaboration, and promote apprenticeship as a valuable form of post-secondary education to youth, parents, and employers. So with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us, and uh, don't forget to join our social me media community to stay in touch.